As we've seen, everything we do in our photography journey is ultimately an expression of who we are. Our personality and preferences seep into every aesthetic choice we make. And so it's really nice for our Instagram galleries to also reflect some of our life, family and ourselves. In this lesson, we will explore using Instagram as a visual diary and how you can elevate your captures from being simple snapshots to something special and in keeping with your aesthetic. I'll give you a few simple tips to help you and your family, friends or kids to feel more comfortable in front of the camera so that hopefully appearing in the frame won't feel so daunting. I started taking photos of myself about seven or eight years ago and it actually came about kind of accidentally. I was offered a paid photo shoot for a clothing brand and I wasn't going to turn down the opportunity to work with them. They sent me in the kids some clothes and we drove an hour and a half to London very early one Sunday morning and took photos against a beautiful tiled wall that sadly no longer exists. I'd researched how to take pictures with a tripod and I forced myself to set aside all my cringe and I just got on and did it. Those were actually the first photos that I took that kind of went viral on Instagram. And the result was that I kept being offered work where I needed to be in the frame too. I'm not telling you this because I think you need to aim to go viral, but because I look back now and my kids are literally double the size and I'm really glad that I took those photos. There'd been very few pictures taken of me by anyone for years until this point, but now I look back gratefully at the photos I've taken with me in two, and I'm glad I've got this record of my life. So stepping into the frame may not come naturally to you, but I'd encourage you to try it. Not only for that record, but also you will learn so much about what works and what doesn't by taking your own photo. You might take 50 and only like one or two, but like with everything we've done, ask yourself what works and what doesn't and what you do differently next time. I prefer more candid, natural shots and structured poses. And there are some really simple ways you can feel more at ease in front of the camera and use these tips too if you're shooting someone else. I always find it really helps to have an object to interact with. Something to hold, such as flowers or an ice cream or coffee cup, will help you to focus on something other than the camera. A little bit of planning before your shoot can help, but if it's all quite impromptu, there are many ways to improvise too. Even if it's a flower growing nearby, or a bag to hold, or just a stick to play with, but that's maybe one for the kids. Just find something to ask your subject to look at or to hold in their hands and they'll immediately feel less self-conscious. It could also be as simple as sitting down on a wall or bench or leaning back against a wall. Having somewhere to put your hands is so much easier than just standing in the middle of a space with nothing to do. Now I'm just asking Robin to lean against this wall behind him. It just takes your mind off the camera. So if he leans back a bit and puts one foot up against the wall, arms away from the body, then he's just gonna hopefully feel a little bit more at ease. And um, move your left foot a bit closer to the wall as well, if you can. Yeah, perfect. Look towards me and past me and think happy thoughts. your right shoulder a little bit towards me, so you kind of rotate your upper body. Perfect, yeah, that's really nice. It's fab, thank you very much. Well done. It also helps people not to be alone in the frame. I'd rather photograph myself with the kids in the frame too, and they are generally better together than they are alone. If you're shooting a couple, Ask them to forget you're there and just wait for those natural interactions. However fleeting, people will sooner or later relax together. And if you're ready, you'll capture some lovely natural smiles and warmth between them. So I've just found this wall and doorway, which I really like. The colour is kind of completely me. It's like my favourite colour and I sort of 
I'm always looking for anything in this turquoisey green and blue. I've just asked the kids to sit on the step because if they're sat down, they're more likely to sort of A, stay more or less where I want them and B, be a little bit more relaxed. So I've come down to their level because I've asked them to sit down and I want to keep the perspective on the door as straight as I can. So if I was stood up and shooting down towards them, then um, that is going to go out and not look straight. I'm just going to kind of let them interact with each other for a minute or two and be a bit patient while they chat and settle. And then um, hopefully my shot will appear. <laughs> Once your subjects have started to relax, you can subtly direct them into better positions. If they're sitting down, make sure their legs don't come straight towards you, as you'll get a strange foreshortened effect. Turn the body to three quarters rather than straight on towards the camera. Keep the arms away from the body. Hands on hips or into the top of the pockets will help to flatter you or your subject. You can also then think about moving around a little or ask your model to do so. For example, a hand to the hair, look away or raise or lower the chin slightly. Try some slight variations in the poses and see what works best. Movement looks great on camera, so if you or your subject are feeling brave, go for it. Jump, twirl, run, try using fabrics and convey that sense of motion. Remember to consider how you or your subject form part of the composition as a whole. So don't neglect your background. You may be able to move yourself slightly to improve the composition or crop a distraction out of the background. The key is to always keep it easy going, pressure free. And if it's not working out, then just stop and try another time. I've taken a few photos with Robin already, but he's quite self-conscious in front of the camera. But now that we've been going for a few minutes, he's starting to feel a bit more relaxed and at ease with it. And he's not thinking so much about me with the camera. So I found this really nice street. We're just coming out into the light. So the light is really nice on him. Rather than standing still in the middle of the street where he's going to feel awkward again, I'm going to ask Robin to just walk down the road towards me. And that bit of movement is hopefully going to help him feel more relaxed and everything to look a bit more natural and candid. OK, you can just start walking towards me, Robin. Perfect. So let's go back again. And this time, just put one hand up to the top of your pocket. Yeah, walking along like that. Lovely. As you implement these tips and start capturing those special moments with the people around you, remember, the more at ease your subject feels, the more authentic your photos will be. And this authenticity will shine through, creating a gallery that doesn't just showcase images, but tells a story, your story. So go out there, capture those moments and create a gallery full of life's precious memories. This video was a free preview of the Instagram Academy course. In this course, we'll delve deep into everything you need to know about mastering Instagram. Whether you're just starting out on the platform or looking to elevate your game, you'll be equipped with the tools and knowledge to make your content truly stand out. I will guide you through building a compelling profile crafting engaging captions, and of course, showcasing your unique style to attract your ideal audience. If you're keen to elevate your presence on Instagram and truly shine, please explore the full version of my Instagram Academy course. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. Click on that link and I will see you inside the Instagram Academy.